Um, so, <laughs> surprise, Texas. Last week in Texas, a uh, activist in the GOP committee came out as a white nationalist. So we're going to talk about him, and we're also going to just do a recap of how many fucking white nationalists ran for office this year. Um, like it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of white nationalists who ran for office this year, and it's um, not okay. And as I go through it, if I um, glossed over some white nationalists, like I missed them, please let me know, um, and then I'll include them in the chat, because I was just like, there's no way this many white nationalists ran for office this year, but they did, and that's cool. <laughs> Um, also, real quick, if you're just joining, Jordan's out of town, and I'm back. I've been doing, I did live streams for Status Quo a while ago, but then I got off the wagon because I had to deal with my personal life, um, but I'm back. And normally, I don't do it in this setting. Normally, it's in my kitchen with a pretty blue background and my kitchen stuff, but um, if you're in Houston, I've been volunteering with 90.1 FM KPFT. It's a Pacifica station, nonprofit. They're super cool, and I've been doing these with them. So I'm here in the office, the office that does not have great lighting, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, so that's that's why I'm here instead of in my kitchen. So anyway, on to white nationalists. Oh, okay, so we're gonna talk about this. Um, Texas won first. Damn right I'm a white nationalist, declares a Texas GOP platform committee member. Okay, this was, um, where's the date on this? I remember this being last week, um, if not last week, earlier this week. But a connected Tea Party activist says white nationalism has nothing to do with white racism. Wait, race su supremacy. God, I can't talk. It's just part of Trump's America First vision. After the Texas Republican Party's 2018 convention, Ray Myers is part of a select group of activists charged with crafting the platform. Myers is also a right, white nationalist, a fact that he declared last week. Damn right, I'm a white nationalist and very proud of it. See, there's the post. <laughs> uh, Myers is a 74-year-old activist who has been involved in GOP politics for decades. But the pivotal moment came when Obama came on the scene. I knew immediately that America was in trouble. <laughs> wow. Uh, reached by the phone Friday, Myers insisted that he saw nothing wrong with labeling himself as a white nationalist. I am Anglo and very proud of it. Just like black people and brown people are proud of their race, I am a patriot, I am very proud of my country. And white nationalist, all that means is America first. That's exactly what that means. That's where the president's at. Myers told The Observer that he agrees with Trump's claim that the media is the enemy of the people. He said the left is pushing a narrative to make white people ashamed of their heritage. We're just patriotic Americans, just like anyone else. Did he really not see a problem with embracing the white nationalist label, I asked. Is there anything wrong with saying they're black and proud? Is there anything wrong with being an American Indian and saying we're red and proud? I mean, just like Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter too. We're on the same melting pot. Now, why can't we as Anglos say that we're proud? The 2018 platform includes numerous planks that espouse a nationalistic view, including a demand for English and English only voting ballots. Okay, so over here he talks about we're all in the same melting pot, right? A phrase commonly used with the U.S. about how culturally diverse we are. And then over here says demand for using English and only English. <laughs> The reasonable use of profiling to defeat radical Islamic terrorists. <sighs> okay, so we're going to talk about this. <laughs> um, all right, so there's something really scary in a white person not understanding. Now, I'm, I'm white, right? I'm white passing. 
Oh, well, actually, I'm like half Mexican, but I don't even love Mexican. I'm white passing. And it's very scary to see someone who's like, when I say I'm a white nationalist, I don't mean kill all the black people. I mean that I'm just proud of my race. Black people say that they're black and proud. Why can't I say that I'm white and proud? It's like, well, because being white and proud is says that you are okay with what white people have done in the past, right? So white people have enslaved black people. White people have committed mass genocide. I'm not just talking the Holocaust with the Jews, right? I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about Rwanda. I'm talking about our current gen genocide in Yemen. I'm talking about our current genocide in Palestine, right? Um, so what else have we done? <laughs> Segregation lynching. To say that I'm white and proud is to say that you're proud of the history of uh, your white ancestors. Um, so there's, um, there's that. And it's a, I think it's a false uh, equivalency to say white and proud and black and proud. Um, because black people have been oppressed and like systematically oppressed to try to make them not feel proud, to make them feel lesser, right? Um, so, so yes, there's my little, my little rant on that. We are going to go on to the politicians next. Um, let's see. <sighs> Record-breaking number of neo-Nazis and white nationalists running for office in the U.S. I decided to choose this one. Because, I mean, yes, it's Israel stuff, but it's nice to have a country outside of the U.S. talking about how many Nazis we have. Um, although I'm pretty sure this uh, Israel paper doesn't talk about how they have Nazis committing genocide in Palestine. But at any rate, nine candidates running in the midterm elections have ties to white nationalists or Nazi groups. John Fitzgerald in California. Denies the Holocaust, sent out robocalls, constituents claiming Jews are taking over the world and must be stopped. Seth Grossen, New Jersey. Arthur Jones, Illinois. Steve King, Iowa. Um, Paul Nguyen, Wisconsin. Corey Stewart, Virginia. Shiva, Massachusetts, Edwin, California, Russell, North Carolina. Now, I want to take a moment to show the diversity of those states, right? So um, commonly, when we think of neo-Nazis and uh, white nationalists and Klansmen, we like to think of Texas. And um, that's understandable. I am from Texas. I have a literal Klansman as a neighbor, and it's terrifying. Um, I live near Texas City, where the Grand Dragon openly has, like, Grand Dragon stuff on his property, on his gate. Um, so, yes, Texas is definitely a white nationalist uh, breeding ground. <laughs> um, but again, the diversity in the states. We saw California, we saw Minnesota, we saw Maine, we saw a lot of northern states and states that you may not um, guess white nationalism would coincide with them. So I want to note that because it's easy to get caught up in, oh, the white nationalists, the racism, isn't anywhere near me. I'm in New York. I don't know. I'm in I'm in Minnesota. I'm in Rhode Island. The the racism is all down south with the Confederates. We're Yankees. <laughs> Civil War talk again. But um, that's not that's not the case. And um, we just need to remember that. Some other news I saw that I thought you guys would find interesting. Um, White nationalist leader is plotting to take over the GOP. This was October 2018. This is fairly recent. 
Uh, Identity Europa is pushing its members to stealthily infiltrate Republican politics to move the party towards agenda of banning non-white immigration. Um, la, 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 la. Despite all outward appearances, KC-29 wasn't at all like the other Republicans. He wasn't there to only champion conservative causes. Casey had ulterior motives, to covertly spread the message of white nationalist group he leads. As the executive director of Identity Europa, Casey is on a bold mission to take over the GOP as much as possible. This is a 29-year-old, right? So this, was a tw this is a 29-year-old who has his plan this is from an October 2018 article, who has his plan to take over the GOP party and make it as far right as possible. So again, another stereotype we need to be aware of. Ew, it's old white people who are all the racists once they die out. This is a 29-year-old who's the executive director of this group. Okay, we need to be aware that not all stereotypes don't always apply. Okay. Um, so, we're going to go back. Take over the GOP as much as possible. Casey and his roughly 800 fellow members believe ethnic diversity damages the country. Emboldened by Trump rhetoric on race and immigration, they advocate for allowing only Caucasians to immigrate to the U.S. in order to maintain a white supermajority. In Casey's perfect world, whites would live among whites in North America, Western Europe, Australia, South Africa. Blacks would live among blacks in Africa, Asians and Asians, and Hispanics in Latin America. Ethnic diversity has been proven time and time again in many studies to be very detrimental for social cohesion, social capital, and it's just not a good model for society. Um, identity... Europa gained notoriety last year when it helped organize the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. The gathering of white supremacists ended with a night white nationalist plowing his car into a group of counter-protesters killing 32-year-old Heather Heyer. So, yeah. Um, so, his group... Follow strict appearance rules, no visible tattoos, good grooming, only conservative clothing. When chatting up young people at events like CPAC, Casey knows it's crucial that he looks the part of your typical Republican booster. I didn't walk in here with, you know, an identity Europa flyer pasted on my forehead or anything. But I did have great conversations, particularly with the younger attendees, college Republican types. Casey's strategy is very focused on that demographic. Um, so yeah. Oh, let's see. In June, the outspoken group member took a step in moving up the GOP louder, landing a position in an elected precinct county officer in Whitman County, Washington. The 23-year-old ran for the position unopposed, but all that matters to Casey is that he secured the GOP position at all. Yikes. Fucking yikes. Like, am I right? What? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so it's not just that we had white nationalists run for um, offices this year. We also have young people forming coalitions to take over the GOP, right? So, like, Donald Trump has really emboldened them. And we can't just say, you know, once we get the old white people out of the way, we'll be fine, because that's not the case at all, clearly. And the seat was taken in Washington, um, not in a southern state uh, where this person ran unopposed. It was in Washington. So, um, I have one more disturbing thing um, to show you, speaking of Trump. Um, <laughs> just a little more. Trump advisor Larry Kudlow hosted publisher of white nationalists at his home. 
the publisher of a website that served as platform for white nationalism, were the guests last weekend at the home of Trump's top economic advisor, Larry Kudlow. So, yeah, um, while Brimlow has long personally rejected the label of white nationalist, he acknowledged to the Harvard Crimson in 2016 that his website does certainly publish a few writers I would regard as white nationalists, and they stand up for whites just as Zionists, black nationalists do for Jews, blacks, etc. If I had known this, we would have never invited him, Kudlow said. I'm disappointed and saddened to hear. So, um, Kudlow, the financial advisor, said that if he would have known, he would have never invited them. He's sad, disappointed to hear. But can we really believe that? Come on. Okay, can we really honestly believe that at this point? 